Please stand. cordial welcome to our church this morning on a very, very special, a very beautiful day, not only for your families, but certainly for the family of our parish and the family of our church, where two of our friends and your relatives stand before this altar in a few short moments, will pledge their love and their fidelity to one another for the rest of their earthly lives. So it's a moment of great joy. It's a moment that we thank God for. We thank God for the gift of their life and the gift of love, that beautiful, unique, human experience that we have together as one family of God. And so we begin our prayers asking God to be with us these next few moments as we ask God to send forth his beautiful blessings upon this young couple who are about to be married. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rajav and Nehas, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your family and friends as today you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. For believers, God is the source of love and fidelity because God is love. And so we listen attentively to his word as we humbly pray to him that he may grant you your heart's love and desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, who since the beginning of the world have blessed the increase of offspring Show favor to our supplications and pour forth the help of your blessings upon these, your servants, so that in union of marriage, they may be bound together in mutual affection, in likeness of mind, and in shared holiness. As we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord, amen. If you kindly be seated now as we will hear God's word. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the great spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all the mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, 
I am nothing if I give away everything I own. And if I hand my body over so that I may boast and do not have love, I gain nothing. For love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous, nor is it pompous. It's not inflated. It's not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It's not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. For no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. Instead, I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It's true. Everyone loves a wedding. We love a wedding because it celebrates two of the great human virtues that there are. Whenever you see young people get married, it always gives us a sense of hope, certainly for the families. Hope, hope for the future, hope for them, hope for ourselves, hope for the world in which we live. But two young people 
from different cultures, different areas, different families, somehow, some way, get to see each other, get to know each other. And there's that one moment in their relationship where they say to themselves, this is the person. This is the one. This is the one I want to share the rest of my human life with, my earthly life with this person. I certainly can live without them, but I choose to live for them and with them. And so that moment arises when every man takes that greatest risk of his life, when he falls on his knee and proposes, will you marry me? Because you don't marry someone for yourself, you always marry for the sake of the other. And that one moment of that great risk, and hopefully, thank you, for saying yes, thence begins a new part of their relationship to the moment where they are today, where in front of you, their family and friends, they make a public, public announcement that this is the person, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, days of sickness and health, this is the person I will be faithful to, I will give my life for, and I will live for that person. For that is what love is. And that's the second greatest virtue we celebrate today, the gift of love. Only human beings can love. Only human beings can experience love. Only human beings can give of themselves over and over and over again, and you can never run out of love. In fact, the more that you love, the more human you become. You live your life for the sake of another. But that's what love is. Love is wanting the best for you, even though it may not be the best for me at the time. That's what love is, of its nature of sacrifice. And marriage, that one unique love of saying to this person, I promise you, I give you everything I have. But it's a promise. There's no contracts to sign today. There's no small print to read. There's no need for attorneys to interpret anything for us today. Two young people will face each other, hold their hands, and promise. And what do they promise? They promise everything. And Raj and Sneha, you'll have no idea the joy that you'll have from now on because of the promise that you're about to make. And the joy that you have will be doubled. But now it is your joy, it will now be the other joy as well. And so what makes one happy will make the other person happy as well. And whatever sorrow comes your way, because we know life is difficult, and we know that there's sorrow in everyone's life, your sorrow will be halved because you share that sorrow with the one you love the most. And so we're thankful to God today for you when you met those two and a half years ago, when you met and you fell in love. And today, you publicly say, this is the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. And so we're so grateful to you. And thank you for having all of us here and sharing in your moment. Now, today also belongs to four other people, namely your parents. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you, first of all, for bringing beautiful life into the world of your son and your daughter. Thank you. The gift of marriage is so powerful. That love is so powerful that it creates another human being. And that human being with an immortal soul. And so parents, thank you for doing that. And let them see in your love which is they about to do today. And so all of us together now rejoice in the Lord and thank him for the gift, the gift of love, the gift of faith, the gift of a beautiful friendship. My dear friends, you have come together here before a minister of the church in the presence of the community that your intention to enter into marriage will be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal and your love be enriched with his blessing so that you may have strength to be faithful to each other forever and to assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so now in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Rajav and Sneha, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Yes. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, 
to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Yes. Now you're prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ in his holy church. Yes. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, please face each other, join your right hands, and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Rajiv, I, Rajiv. take you, Sneha, take you Sneha. To, be my wife. to be my wife. I promise, I promise. To, be to be faithful to you in good times, in good times. and in bad, and in, bad. In, sickness. in sickness, and in health, and in both. to love you, love you. And, honor you. and honor you all the days of my life. I, Sneha, take you, Rajiv, take to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God who joins together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. O oh Lord, who by your death on the cross have earned the church as your bride, bless this thali, which unites the bride and groom in mutual trust and love. May this thali, the symbol of unity, bind them into indivisible love and fullness of fidelity. May the cross embossed on it give them strength to bear cheerfully the sorrows of life and to lead a life pleasing to you. May this also be a symbol of their fidelity. Amen. Lord God, bless these rings which we bless and make them holy, which they give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Neha, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the, Father, and of the Son, and of the, Son and, of the and of the Holy Spirit. Raja, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. O merciful Lord, 
who adorns the human soul with the enduring mantle of grace. Bless this month with Goldie. Help this bride and groom to put you on through their mutual love and self-giving. O Lord, who clothe the Holy Church, your bride, in the mantle of glory, may this couple worthy be put on the robe of glory in heaven after a life of sanctity on earth. Amen. So now we humbly invoke God's blessings upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the bond of marriage. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness uphold what you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's with great joy that I present for the first time in public Mr. and Mrs. Alex. Congratulations. Wonderful. Congratulations. It's wonderful to know you. Thank you. Very well, beautiful flowers.